What's going on and welcome into End on a Make. Uh, now today, probably a little shorter, just wanted to talk about, um, unfortunately, just such a, a heavy rash of injuries that seem to be happening this season. Um, we've seen all throughout the year a ton of players go down with some really severe injuries. Um, I mean, Kevin Durant just came back this season and he's he's missed time. The whole Nets big three trio since they made the Harden trade has only played together seven games. I think it's like 180 minutes since they traded for James Harden. Um, and, you know, this week we, we have Jamal Murray go down with a torn ACL. And then today, Friday afternoon, Donovan Mitchell goes down with probably just an ankle sprain. Um, it looked a lot worse. They had to help him off the court. He wasn't putting any weight on it. It looked like a pretty pretty serious injury. And that's kind of what got me thinking about all of this. So up until today, this injury, Donovan Mitchell had been on an absolute tear the last eight or so games, eight to ten games. He's been averaging 36, 36.8 points. The Jazz are kind of getting that, that momentum back that they had before the All-Star break. And now if he's forced to miss any time, they're in such a tight race with the Phoenix Suns that this could be this could be a playoff landscape changing injury. And it's unfortunate that we see this many severe injuries happen as we start to hit the stretch or like the most important part of the season. So the NBA heard a lot of people mentioning that the condensed season trying to play seventy two games in hundred and forty six days, which is what they are attempting to do and them including the play-in tournament and the playoffs. Um, they've come out and released data that says injuries are actually down compared to where they would be in a normal season. So they're saying injuries are down. It just seems like it because there's more severe player, like more severe injuries to higher caliber players and because the frequency of games, it just seems like it's happening more often. Now, I don't know about that. Like, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure if there's data available, they're going through it. But like Josh Hart took to Twitter earlier today as well and said, you know, hey, we're never going to do this condensed season again. Or we should never do this condensed season again. Too many people getting hurt. Um, when you look at all the teams that have had their their seasons really shaped by it, like the Lakers right now are the five, five seed in the West when they will be the prohibitive finals favorite when the playoffs start assuming anthony davis and lebron get back but anthony davis and lebron both go out with like very severe injuries and that completely changes where they're going to be in the standings and it's going to make it you know a lot harder for them to go back to back to maybe even make it to the finals the heat who were the other finals team last year has had to deal with a ton of injuries as well jimmy butler missed a lot of time uh, Victor Oladipo, who they just traded for, has missed time for both them and for both of his previous teams this season, the Pacers and the Rockets. James Harden's been out. Kyrie's been in and out of the lineup. It's kind of injury, but also kind of like he's just doing his thing. So can't really complain about that. But even, you know, the injuries are really derailing um, young players, too. So Cleveland had that hot start, and Sex Land was rolling, and everyone was like, this is an incredible story. I can't believe it. And then Sexton got hurt, Darius Garland got hurt, and that kind of threw off their momentum. They didn't have Kevin Love for the first, like, eight, nine, ten weeks of the season. I think he only played one game because of his lingering injury issues. Then with other young players, you have LaMelo Ball, who is putting on a show every night, basically. And he, we lose him for the season, most likely with a fractured hand at, like, the height of his must – like, he was – the Hornets were must-see TV – and that's not to say that they're not still a very good team, but now they have no LaMelo. I think Gordon Hayward's hurt. I think uh, Devontae's missed time. P.J. Washington's missed time. And, like, that's a young, fun team that has been completely, you know, their their momentum has been capped by injuries. Uh, similarly, with the rookies, you have the Kings losing Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, he missed an extended period of time this year as well. He's back and, you know, kind of getting back into the form he was in. Um, James Wiseman from the Warriors was just lost with meniscus surgery, so he'll be out for the rest of the season. And it just feels like the grind of these of these games are real, like the travel and the grind of the games. You know, it does have an effect on these players. I read something that said they are up to three, 
over three. It was 3.5 games a week. I don't know how you play a half a game a week. So I'm just going to say over three games a week on average for the season, which is one whole game more than what a typical NBA season would be if it was the full 82 across the normal time frame. And with that combined, with like I understand that, you know, it's not like, you know, you're, you're a professional athlete. Like I understand that it's, you know, it's a great, unbelievable job that everyone that is in the NBA is happy to have, but it is still like a grind. Like I can't imagine planes every other day playing an intense, intense game every, every other day. Like, you know, like it does take, you know, mental toughness. It does take a certain type of person to succeed in that environment and then you know you have these these lingering injury issues kind of mounting you have players that are noticing it that are saying hey this this condensed season isn't good and you know there's no real remedy for it because the shortened season makes it harder for teams to strategically plant it like plan out rest um, the, for the Lakers, if both of their guys were still healthy, if Bron and AD were healthy, I'm sure that one of them would be, would be resting every so often. They would just take turns. Same thing with Brooklyn, like similar how the Clippers do it, where it's like, hey, no Kawhi tonight, but Paul George, hey, neither of them are playing. Hey, no Paul George. Tonight. Like those top tier teams can afford that because they're pretty locked in on their stand. Like for the Blazers too. The Blazers started great, and then injuries hit them with C.J. McCollum going down, Nurkic going down again. They still haven't had Zach Collins this year at all, and it's just a shame because as we saw last year when Portland fought their way into the playoffs, you're, they were not an eight-seed team. They were a much better team than that, and they started to get guys back. They were able to kind of make a run, and you know, th- and ultimately they did get, I think, knocked out in, I think it was five games to the Lakers, but like, that shouldn't have been their first round matchup. That was just strictly they had to play the hand they were dealt. Uh, similarly, you know, you look at a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves, they make a huge trade for D'Angelo Russell, and now him and Carl Anthony Towns have only played like 20 games together or less across last season's trade deadline to now. And it's just, it's hard to get a gauge of what your team's going to be when your two superstar players aren't on the court together. Uh, similarly for Memphis, Jaron Jackson Jr. hasn't played at all this year. He's supposed to be coming back, I think, this weekend, maybe next week uh, to help them down the stretch run. But, like, he's not going to just, like, throw on a uniform and run out and average 20 and 10. I mean, if he does, uh, that will be incredible, and I will be back here talking about it. But it's just – it's a bummer, and it ruins ruins the quality of, of the game. Like, even the Pelicans. The Pelicans are exciting, an exciting young team. Josh Hart's been out an extended period of time. Uh, they were without Lonzo Ball until tonight's game. Brandon Ingram missed some time. Zion's missed a little bit of time. Nothing too severe. And it's just a shame. And, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg of players that have been injured. We could go with the Orlando guys, Fultz and Jonathan Isaac. And it's just, you know, when the injuries add up like this for teams across all, whether they're, you know, top teams that have had their title hopes, significantly diminished like the jet uh, not the jazz but like the nuggets have with jamal murray going down or it's a young exciting team that's trying to see what they have like the cavaliers i guess now the magic are on that trajectory um it's a shame it's a shame to see these injuries come in and and make this effect i know nuggets coach mike malone said that the players you can see that they're exhausted and while the science may not say oh yeah there's more injuries happening. There's probably more severe injuries happening as a result of, you know, excessive fatigue on these players. And there's always going to be freak injuries. There's always going to be those, like, damn, this really sucks that this happened. Nothing could have stopped it. But at the same time, like, I just, I don't see, you know, the benefit of of trying to, to spin it positively and not just be like, hey, you know what, I'm sorry. It just it feels like the league has taken a lot of lumps this season specifically with how they've gone about these things. And I think a big reason that the NBA has always been such a successful fan favorite type of league is because there truly seemed to be an understanding between, especially in the, the Adam Silver era, between the commissioner and the players. And I think that there's, you know, 
a lot of questions that are starting to mount between the players and the players association and the league itself. And it's, it's, you know, it's going to play out in public and that's rough. And I think if injuries keep mounting, like, like say another player or two, you know, knock on wood, but say another player or two gets hurt to a serious contending team, uh, Joel Embiid missed time. I don't know how I didn't, and he's, you know, he was the presumptive MVP favorite and he went down with and missed 10 or so games and now they're saying you know he might be out of contention because he missed that time it's just you know it's crazy and it's sad to see and it doesn't put i don't want to say puts an asterisk on the season because that's probably a little over dramatic i think those injuries like if donovan mitchell's injury was very significant i think that would put an asterisk on the jazz's season if they were to not make you know a deep west run similarly to denver I think if, you know, if Braun and AD don't come back, then you put, like, I don't think you put an asterisk on the entire season. I think it just goes on that team. Like, hey, do you can't, there's no, there's no, like, way to critically judge those teams when they're not playing at their full strength. So I just hope that the rest of this year we can see guys kind of start to rest up a bit more and prepare for the playoffs, the stretch runs, um, the playing tournament even. Because those are going to be high intensity games for sure between whatever teams make it in, and I just hope we can see continued health. Um, as basketball fans, I would assume that's just, that's what we all want is we just want to see the best possible product, but we want to see, you know, the players playing at a high level for it. We want to see them healthy. Um, that's everything I got. It ended up being long anyway, but apologize for that. Thank you for watching, and I will 